Okay. Good morning, everybody. We're going to officially get started now. Um, if you weren't with us last week and you didn't see me introduce myself, I'm Jenny Davis and I am the principal. Um, I am going to stop sharing my screen so that you guys can see us better. Um, so what we're going to be talking about today is we're going to be talking about stress and anxiety and the stress and anxiety that we deal with as parents and how we can manage our own stress and anxiety so that um, I want to say that we're better we're better for ourselves, we're better for our partner, we're better for our kids, and we're just better all around because when we're stressed and anxious, we aren't our best selves. Um, I'm seeing in the chat and you guys putting stuff in the chat, thank you. Um, you know, our conversation today is going to be um, more general, like on how to, um, one person that won't let me admit them. Hmm. Um, you know, generally how that we can um, relieve our own stress and anxiety, but at the same time, those of you that have specific questions, I, de I definitely see the questions about the parent portal and the questions that you may have that I get is causing you stress and anxiety. I will um, address specific questions that you guys have about school. Um, so I will just say that, you know, this is a um, really great topic. Um, I tend to be, or at least I try to manage my own stress and be a low stress person. Cause as you can imagine, I have a stressful job. And if I let my stress get to me, I would just be a basket case. And that would not make me a very good principal or a good parent. Um, but this morning, this is my son's first day of school. He is starting the seventh grade today. Um, and those of you that are returning parents, you know, and I've talked about my kids before, you probably know that um, my son has never enjoyed school. Um, school is not his favorite thing. And so starting school and his own anxiety about school, is, it's always been something that we've had to deal with, which causes me anxiety. He was actually pretty chill this morning. Um, I'm not chill. Um, I'm still pretty anxious. I keep like you know, my husband took him because we put him on the bus this morning to get to school. My husband took him to on the bus and I'm like, I'm trying to work. I'm like, well, what if Paul put him on the wrong bus? What if he went to the wrong school? Like, what if he's not? And so I literally like this morning, keep like checking the attendance and monitoring the attendance on, um, they have power school to like, make sure that he was marked present because <laughs> that's my own anxiety as a parent. So I, I wanted to share that story to start out today to like let you guys know I am a parent. I, the anxiety that we feel as parents for our kids, it, it's a lot. Um, and I totally get that. So I'm going to let Ms. Gunter come in and hopefully give us tips on how to reduce our own stress and anxiety. Good morning, everyone. I'm Mrs. Gunter. I'm the school social worker here. And because we have so many kiddos dealing with stress, we are absolutely excited this year to have a second social worker to help carry that load. And as Ms. Davis is talking, my heart's kind of racing. I'm like thinking about the stress I have going on right now. And it's something that we don't really put a spotlight on because we're so focused on our kids. Um, my, my oldest son that you probably heard me talk about if you were here last year is now living in a dorm at San Jose State. Um, I have no idea about what he's doing. He's way too cool to text me. So my mind is racing. Um, I moved him into the dorm and he didn't have a bed rail on the top bunk. And I've been thinking about maybe he fell off last night. Like my anxiety is of the unknown is just like, you know, um, it distracts me from other things, right? And I think that's why it's so important to talk about our own stress and anxiety because if we're not modeling that, you know, that we take care of ourselves for our kids, our kids don't do that for themselves. I have these very vivid memories of my mom. Um, when she was stressed, she would go, she would leave the house. And then like the next day I would find like Jack in the box wrappers in her car. Like that's how she dealt with her stress. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I did that last week. And it really went to show like how much we watch what our parents do, how we watch how our parents take care of themselves. 
And, you know, now I have this responsibility of like, I have to do that in a really healthy way to show my kids how to do it. Um, I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to share the screen, Jenny, just because, hang on just a second. Well, while you're getting set up, I just want to tell all of you, is my husband just texted me and he's like, of course he got on the right bus. Stop trying to freak me out. <laughs> Are we sure? <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> okay, I am. I'm gonna do my best. <laughs> okay. Did I do it right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So we have this this check in process. This is this is something that. I try to do for myself every day. This is something that we're teaching the students to do every day. Um, I'll be sharing in the next couple of weeks a little more about what our mental health and wellness center is going to look like, but this is kind of the general check-in for ourselves. So I wanted to start this session off by doing a mental health check-in for ourselves. You are under no obligation to put your answers in the chat. If you want to, you can, um, but it's kind of just like your own personal check-in about how you're doing. And so the first question is, how am I feeling? And when I do feelings checks, I usually do a scale between one and 10. For me, 10 would be like, I'm at Disneyland, I'm having fun with my family and I have a Dole Whip. Like that's a 10 for me, like it's just the best day ever. Um, when I think of a one, I think of, I'm in really bad shape. I might even be in crisis and I'm not really, um, the best me that I can be. Like, I'm just having a really hard time. So for yourself, and this is something that I like to like, I even keep numbers in my phone of like, where was I yesterday versus where am I today? Just to kind of get an idea of like, you know, what what's made me feel stressed, made me feel badly. So for you, between one and 10, how are you feeling? Um, feelings are like in our mind, but they're also in our body. So I always like to take a moment to just scan my body and say, am I feeling tension anywhere? A lot of times if I'm doing something or handling something that's really stressful, I get this kind of pit or not in my stomach. And that's something for me that's always a red flag that there's something going on. Um, some people feel it in their shoulders. Some people will say they wake up and their jaw is very tight. Like for you, what are you feeling in your body? When you scan your body, what's going on? The second question Ginny addressed in the chat already is what's been worrying you lately? Sometimes you don't even realize what you're worried about until you give yourself a few minutes to process it. What am I worried about? What's worrying me lately? What kind of things are going on that I don't really have control over that I'm worrying about? The next one is very important and we are so good at lecturing our kids about this one and we are so bad about doing this for ourselves. Am I pr providing my body with its basic needs? And when I say basic needs, I mean, are you getting rest? Are you getting food, healthy, nourishing food? Are you drinking water? Are you getting sunshine? Are you getting exercise? Am I providing my body with its basic needs? So just for yourself, answer that. Are you doing that? Which of those are you lacking? Which of those are you really good at? Which of, are you not very good at? For me, I tend to run on a little bit of sleep and it catches up with me. I'm irritable, I'm in a bad mood. Um, this week I was realizing that I was extra stressed and I hadn't slept, I hadn't exercised, I wasn't eating good. I can't remember the last time I drank water. And so that was like a red flag for me. Okay, this is where I need to start in taking care of myself. Um, the next question that I want you to ask yourself is, what am I doing to bring myself joy? And one of the saddest parts of my job is that when I ask students this, it is so rare that somebody has the answer right away. What are you doing to bring yourself joy? And a lot of times kids just are like, well, I'm so busy, I don't really have time for that. So as parents, what are you doing to bring yourself joy? Um, for me, I like, I like, I'm not gonna lie, I like getting my nails done and shopping and being with my family. And for me, that brings me joy. And so I try to like make time for myself to do that. Ginny, what brings you joy? Um, I enjoy, you know, well, I love to read my trashy novels. And so when I have time to do that, especially when I'm 
awake enough to read it and I'm not falling asleep in like 30 seconds, yeah. then that will bring me joy. Um, when my kids are actually getting along and talking to each other, um, like they were last night, which was, whoa, like miracle. Um, that certainly brings me joy. Yeah. They were getting along. I know it was crazy. They must um, be exhausted. <laughs> yeah. My pets bring me joy. You yeah. know, I, I have two dogs and my cat that Yvonne gave me last year. Um, <laughs> and you know, they're adorable. So they bring me joy. Yeah. So parents for you, what brings you joy? Um, I know a lot of times my answer is like, my kids bring me joy, but now that I'm kind of moving into that more empty nest area, I'm trying to make sure I'm providing myself with joy that maybe doesn't include them. They are my joy, but what else is providing me joy? And then the last question is, who is in your corner? Who is your person? Who can you go to? Who listens to you without judgment? Who do you trust? Who is in your corner? Maybe you don't have someone in your corner. Maybe you're the person that everybody goes to when they're stressed out. So just some thoughts. So these five questions are things that I think, you know, it sounds like a lot of questions to ask yourself every day, but it's so important because if any of these are off, we tend to have an off day. If I came to work and I was at a two, I had a ton of worries. I hadn't eaten or slept. Nothing's bringing me joy. I felt like the world was against me. I don't do good work. Um, I learned that lesson this week. I wasn't taking care of myself and I just knew that I needed to reset myself. I wasn't being productive. I wasn't feeling happy. And when I went through this list of questions, I had to like take pause and kind of reevaluate everything and put myself in a better headspace. So I know parents, it's, it's stressful, you know, um, just what we do every day. And I don't even think we really acknowledge how much we do. We're running our own lives. We're working with our kids. We're working. We have to keep the house clean and make dinner and all these things that are so normal for us that we don't realize how much stress they put on us. So how do you model stress management? This is a huge one because um, my kids know when I'm overly stressed and not taking good care of myself. I'm in a bad mood. I'm, um, I, I'm agitated. I'm half paying attention to them while they're talking to me and I'm kind of on my phone. Um, and so sometimes when my modeling of stress is like a negative thing, they'll kind of call me out on it. Um, and so when you model stress management, I think the first thing is, do you acknowledge your own stress to your families? Do you communicate with them that you're not okay? You know, what does that look like in your house? Um, I think sometimes we're so used to being the strong person, you know, to be the one that, you know, holds it together. But do you ever acknowledge it? Like, have you ever said like, hey, you guys, I'm having a really bad day. I can use some extra support. Maybe if you couldn't, wouldn't mind, you know, not fighting today, like just being really honest about your feelings. Um, do you minimize it? Maybe you even minimize it to yourself, right? Like maybe you even minimize it and say like, oh, this is just how it is. It's fine and I'm, I'm fine. But maybe you're really not fine. Like how do you do that for yourself? Do you minimize it? Have you ever gotten help for it? Um, I tend to be very vocal with my kids about my own struggles with stress and anxiety um, just because it's been a big part of my life. And so my kids know that I always tell them, I said, every night I take 30 minutes that I have to be by myself. I have to, you know, just decompress, have quiet time. Even if I just sit in my car for a half an hour, they know that that is what I do to maintain my stress level. And that's just something that's been very normal in my house. Um, so, and, and, you know, there's been times in my life where I had to get help for that. You know, I wasn't doing okay. And I made them know, like, I just wanted to teach my children that it's okay to not be okay sometimes. It's okay to get help for it. It's not okay to minimize your struggles. Your struggles are valid. Somebody will always have it worse for you, but that doesn't mean that your stressors are not important. And then do you use coping strategies? You know, maybe you say things like, um, oh, I need to get on the treadmill because I'm feeling really stressed. Maybe they hear you say that. Maybe you say like, hey, I'm going to say no to that party I was supposed to go to because it's just feeling very overwhelming for me. Like, how do you take care of yourself? And what have your kids seen you do to take care of yourself? If I were to ask your children what their parent or what you do to manage your stress, what would they tell me? Jenny. 
what do I do to manage your stress? Well, I think they would say that, you know, mom like goes and like is by herself in her bedroom <laughs> um, because I definitely will. I am at heart, like a true introvert. And so when I get very overwhelmed, I need to just be by myself. Um, to be able to regroup, um, especially since I have a job where I'm around people all day. Um, and so when I get home, I absolutely need that. And they know that about me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I would wonder sometimes what my kids say if someone were to ask them, what does your mom do when she's stressed? Because somebody would, you know, of course say like, she yells at me or she slams the door or, or whatever it is. Right. And, and so that's why I like to talk about these things because my kids are you know, they're pretty good about saying like, did you not take your 30 minutes, mom? Cause I just, I didn't even mean to make you mad and you're, you're kind of mad, right? And so we have that open dialogue. Um, and trust me, our communication is not perfect. These are just some of, the, some of the things that we've worked on for a long time to help things be a little bit smoother in our house. So just keep that in mind. Like, what do you think your children would say about how you manage your stress or if you manage your stress or if you need to manage your stress Oops. Okay, this is kind of just another quiz for us. And this one is sometimes for me, when I look at this list, it feels just very normal. Like this is just kind of like a normal week, right? And so I want you just to look, you know, I'll read them out loud and just kind of give yourself a little number of like, you know, like a little line if that happened, right? Like if you felt this is this week. Um, in the past week, have you felt you don't have a pen or something, grab one because I really want you to check in with yourself and make sure that you're doing okay. And this is something that we can model for our kids. Um, have you felt swamped by your responsibilities this week? You can probably hear my little pen like. <laughs> um, have you felt unmotivated that there wasn't enough time to get everything you need to get finished, finished? Like you've disappointed someone? Have you felt exhausted? Like you have a lot on your mind? Do you feel like you're overcommitted? There's too much going on. We went from a really kind of slower paced year to having to get up in the morning and commute and bring our kids to school and take them school clothes shopping. Have you felt overcommitted? There's too much going on. Have you felt like drinking alcohol to deal with stress? or any other substance that might help you relax? Have you felt fatigued by the end of the day? I don't know about you, Ginny, but I've taken a nap every day since work started. When I get home from work, I'm literally like passed out face down on my bed because I'm so not used to going eight hours running around the campus um, after being at home for a year and a half. Are you exhausted? Have you felt that your stress is negatively impacting your life? This next one, I always used to just kind of read, but now that we, you know, we've gone through COVID, it's bigger. Have you been worried about your health? Maybe you have a health condition. Maybe you're worried that you might get sick. Maybe you think you might be sick. You know, have you felt like things keep piling up and you just cannot get ahead? Have you felt like you didn't have time to breathe? Irritable. Maybe like there's too much to do and there's not enough time. I think I probably say that a few times a week. I wish there was more hours. Um, have you ever felt like nothing's going right? Have you felt like it was difficult to sleep, fall asleep, stay asleep? How's your sleep patterns? Have you felt like you're neglecting to care for yourself? Um, have you felt like there's no time to spend with your loved ones? You know, during the shutdown, I spent so much time with my kids and the last couple of days I've kind of passed them in the hall and I'm doing things and they're doing things and I haven't really had time to spend with them. Um, check your body, any tension in your muscles? Have you felt like crying? Have you been worried about the health of your family members? You know, and again, these are just tallies. There's no like, you know, grading of this, but it's just an awareness about the things that you felt this week because it's, again, it's, it's uncommon for us to validate our own feelings and our own stressors. Um, before I kind of get into that, Jenny, I just kind of wanted to like generally like, you know, with the beginning of the school year, have people's stress levels increased, stayed the same, decreased? And I say decreased because like, you know, 
I had to make three meals a day for my kids when we were in shutdown. Now we have free lunch and free breakfast. And that's like the most exciting thing that I've heard in a long time. So like for you coming back to work or coming back to school or having your kids come back, what is your level of stress? Um, yeah, I mean, it's been, um, It, 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 there's just been a lot, like every day, there's just a lot. And, you know, working from home and even with distance learning, it just seemed like it was, I don't know. And I don't know if it's the sound, like sound, I think is a lot to me too. Um, it was just so, it was quieter. And like, you felt like you could like answer questions, like, and like get stuff done. And now it's just like, there, it's all at once, um, which can be very overwhelming. Um, and I'm sure, uh, you know, as a parent, it's the same thing. Like, oh, we've got to do this. We got to do this. I was at Target yesterday, like getting some last minute school supplies for my son and Target was like cleared out. Like there was nothing. <laughs> I was like, oh, gosh, <laughs> you know, um, so just, you know, the stuff that you have to worry about, um, you know, as, um, you know, a parent, um, that, it, you know, it can be really overwhelming. Um, and especially when there's like a transition, like this, this is a transition period right now, school is starting. And so you had the summertime and like we've had, I think even though we had school last year, it was distance learning, your kids are at home. So it was almost like an extended summertime for like, you know, for, we ca I counted the days, um, they were out of school for 514 days. So you had your kids at home for 514 days and now they're not. And so that transition to going back to and getting your kids out of the house um, with my son starting school today, this is the first day that my dogs are on their own. <laughs> for the whole day. <laughs> so, you know, it's a transition for everybody. Um, and, you know, so we need to get used to our new normal. Yeah. And it's not the same normal that it was on March 12th of 2020. And that's, you know, with a pandemic and everything that we've gone on and like dealt with as a society, there is no going back to March 12th. Like that's just not our reality anymore. And so I think, you know, the crazy thing about the human body and our mind and like how we deal with stress is we adapt to it. Um, and I think that the stress that we're all feeling right now, it's not forever, we'll adapt. Definitely. And so. And I know it's not just us, Ginny, and I would, and no pressure, but if anybody wanted to just share with us, like, what is, what is stressful right now? How are you, how is it coming back to bringing your kiddos here? Are there particular things that you're stressed about when it comes to your kids being back at school? No pressure. I have the, the joy of being a mom of a student here and just an employee here. So there's like two different kinds of stress going on for me. Um, but for any of you, even if you want to throw it in the chat, like, What's been stressful this last, has it only been a week, Jenny, since we started school? It's been a week. Wow, it has been. A week and a half. <laughs> okay, week and a half. <laughs> so if anyone wants to share with us, just let us know, you know, what is it? What's stressful for you? Because we might be feeling different because we work here, right? Like it might feel different for us, but as a parent of a student here at Piedmont, what is the stress right now? Well, I can tell in the chat that the stress is the parent portal. Um, so let me, let me try to relieve some of that stress. Um, and I wish I had more answers. Um, realize that us at the site do not control the parent portal. Um, that was sent out by the district and we got an email. I get what today, today's Thursday. And I got an email Tuesday night, like, oh, it went out and like, okay. Thanks for the heads up. So we could, you know, and Rupert too, our parent um, involvement specialist, like he didn't, we didn't get advanced warning that it was going out so that we could have advanced warned all the parents. Um, it goes, it seems like it's going to one parent. It's whoever the primary parent is. Um, so um, parent portal is for infinite campus. Infinite campus is how you're going to check your, um, 
kids attendance. Um, it's going to be how you will be able to check most of your kids grades. I actually think most of our teachers are going to use the infinite campus grade book. School loop is still around, but it is being phased out. I personally am telling all of our teachers, I would rather them not use it this year. And I'd rather them use infinite campus. Um, I think in my email, I told you, I would rather parents not use school loop for um, communication. Um, School Loop is not a great communication tool. I had a parent email me and it may be one of you and then you're like, she never responded to my email. And I saw it on School Loop, but I can't reply to it. So that's why I'm telling you not to use School Loop to email teachers because sometimes you can see the email and it's really frustrating because you want to respond to the parent, but it doesn't let you reply. Um, so please, I have on the website, I've double checked all of the, um, email addresses. Um, I linked them in my email that I sent on Sunday. This is where you find the teacher email addresses. This is where you find the email addresses of all the rest of the staff that's like not a, a classroom teacher. Um, and so I've double checked those email addresses. That's um, not to say that there might not be a mistake, um, but I have triple checked them. So, um, Um, so, you know, email directly, please. Um, the parent portal, um, Rupert has put his email address in there and I know he's on the chat right now, um, answering some questions. And then, um, I put his email address in there. He's the one, he's the contact to help you. Um, it seems like the emails coming out for the parent portal are coming out in waves and realize it's not just, they're not just going to Piedmont, they're going to every single school and every single family. So this is a district of 25,000 students. So that's a lot of emails to go out and it seems like they're going out in waves. So if you haven't gotten it yet, that doesn't mean you're not going to get it. But again, it's going to um, the person that has the, that's the primary. Um, so it should be, if you're the one that's receiving my emails, um, though, I think my emails go out to um, both parents. So that I'm not sure. Um, so if it's not you, check your partner to see if they got it. Um, and my understanding is once you get the email, you get a temporary password as a parent to set up the parent portal. Um, and that's the key. You got to get that email to set because you have to have the temporary password. Um, mm. And then it's a fairly easy process to get it set up. Like once you get that, but you have to get that email first. Yvonne, have you gotten it? Have I opened it? No, not <laughs> yet. <laughs> I'm taking notes as you're talking right now to relieve my stress of, of being a little behind. So thank you. <laughs> Um, so if you have any issues with the parent portal, um, or if you still want a school loop account, even though, like I said, we're not really using, um, school loop, um, Rupert is the person to help you. Okay. Rupert's your guy. He, that, that's, this is his whole job to help parents with all of this. So he's your guy. Um, Rupert, I'll be calling you later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Was that what was in the chat mostly about stress, the parent portal? <laughs> the parent, that's why I'm like, we need to, like okay, they're no, stressed absolutely. about the parent portal. <laughs> is there anything, I can't see it, so is there anything they're else? They're also stressed about lunch. Um, and oh. so I, please be patient with the lunch situation. Um, we are, um, we've had, a, I don't wanna say like 20 kids turn in applications to work in the kitchen, which is awesome. But um, as you guys, you know, have ever been hired for a job, like you have to get the paperwork cleared and everything. You can't just start immediately. Um, and so that is taking a little time. They did just hire, the district hired a more a permanent like kitchen worker. So we do, and then she's starting today. So we do have one more person working in there today, which means like, as we get more workers, we're gonna be able to double the lines. Um, we have a whole side of our lunch lines that aren't open because we don't have enough workers. Um, but we will like in the next week, they're working very fast to get these applications processed and so that we can um, have um, all of the lunch lines work, um, work. They are moving very fast. I've been monitoring the lunch lines. They are going quicker. Like every day, it seems like they're going quicker. Um, you know, some lines are longer because up at the top of the windows, they have what food is being served in the line. Um, some things are more popular. And so that line might be um, 
a little bit longer, but there are shorter lines. Um, but they definitely are getting worked out. So if the kids are telling you, if your kid's coming home and being like, the line was 30 minutes long, you guys, that's not true. I mean, honestly, with like 20 minutes left, with 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, halfway through lunch, the lines are pretty much dwindled. Um, so there is time. Um, there really is. Um, and there was somebody in the chat about there's no place to sit. I know where I stand um, for most of lunch and I see empty benches all the time. So tell your kid to walk around more. This big campus, there's more places to go. Um, there's benches, there, there are. Oops, sorry, one of us was frozen. It was probably me. Oh. Okay. Well, you helped relieve some of my stress. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for the lunch line, I would say 10 to 15 minutes in the lunch line. And I know that's long. I'm not saying that that's ideal and that's the way it is going to be. It's the way it is right now. And it is long, but 10 to 15 minutes in the line, I think is a fair assessment of what's happening right now. And like I said, my hope is by next week, they've got, you know, if we can double the lunch lines, it should just be a couple of minutes. It should be super fast. Um, and so that, that's our goal, we're, but we're getting there. That's awesome. So. Are there any questions in there, Jenny? Are there more questions that we can help relieve people's stress? Well, so there was also questions about um, sports and COVID testing. Um, and I, I think that just like the anxiety about COVID in general um, and coming back in person and just, yeah, it's, it's stressful. Um, I, I get it. I mean, I'm going to be completely honest. I had a moment, I think it was the week before school started and you know, all the news about the Delta variant and all this stuff. And like this moment, like, oh gosh, what are we doing? Are we going to be able to do this? Like, yeah, I was like, yeah, we're going to be able to do this. Um, the kids are great about wearing masks. Um, they, they are like, even outside, like they're wearing their masks all of the time. They are amazing about wearing their masks. They, they really, I, I'm so proud of our students. They, they are, they are being so great about it. Um, I haven't heard about one student like not wearing it or yeah, I even see them like take a bite of their lunch and then put it back. Yeah. On they all like, they all, yeah, they'll put so good. <laughs> I mean, they, they are, they're so great about it. Um, and so that's just been, this has been really like our, on the whole, our students are so wonderful. I am so blessed to work here. I, I enjoy our students. Um, so much. So like I said, the, um, you know, but with the testing, so we do, okay, I'll back up. Last year, all athletes had to be COVID tested. Um, that is not the requirements from the state um, that may change, but as of right now, we aren't required to do um, testing of athletes. Um, we do have tests for students in the office. Well, it's the same test that the staff use. Um, we have voluntary testing. We've got tests. Um, the tests are picked up Wednesday mornings. So they would want to test probably the best day for them to come and take the test would be like Tuesday afternoon. Um, you know, in Wednesday, it, they're picked up around nine. So they technically could come like Wednesday before school. The trick with the test, because it is a mouth swab, they have to have not eaten 30 minutes before um, or taken anything, like not had anything to drink or eat 30 minutes before. So that's the trick with it. Um, for students to test, we have to have a signed waiver from the parents. So today when I send out the recording for this um, meeting, I will, um, I will, I've sent out the waiver before, but I will reattach them and send them out when I send out this recording. Um, and so, because we have to have the kids um, signature. Um, and so, um, and then they can come and test. The test, um, how it works, you don't get notified. It's not like if you go to one of like the testing kiosks where you get like an actual test result, it doesn't work that way. Um, how this works, if you don't hear anything, you're fine. So they don't notify you if you got a negative test, they only notify you if you get a positive test. Um, so that's how it works. Um, so just know that. Um, um, <laughs> You know, this is, we're talking stress and anxiety and like people like school starting. Oh, there's so much. Um, 
but like I said before, there are places to sit. Um, so tell your kid if they're standing eating to walk to a different area of campus. I promise you there are places to sit. Um, like it just might be in that immediate area where they want to hang out and all their friends want to hang out. There's no place to sit um, because teenagers, they, they're teenagers, um, but there are plenty of places to sit. Um, <laughs> the PE lockers, um, yeah, not, I mean, our locker rooms are old. I'm not going to lie. They're, they're original to the campus. They were built in the 1960s. So they're, it's old. I mean, they're, they're not new. Um, no, we're not going to get new lockers. Um, that they're not upgrading the locker room anytime soon. Um, they do are cleaned though. So if they, they are, um, and, you know, they do the thing with cleaning out the lockers though, um, and I'll talk to the PE teachers about it and like, cause they usually do that in the summer, but we didn't have anybody in the locker room last year. So it might be a little dusty um, because I, my guess is they might not have like after non-use, they probably didn't do a big clean. Um, so it's, it's probably just dust. So yeah. Um, yeah. Um, trying to think what else. Um, the PE lockers are the only lockers we have on campus. Um, we don't have any other lockers on campus. And um, there was a question about tutoring. So um, no, there are no regular lockers for kids to use their books. Um, we don't have regular lockers at Piedmont Hills and we haven't had regular lockers for, I was a teacher here when they were taken out. And so that was probably 10, 12 years ago. Um, so um, yeah, I mean, I totally get, you know, wanting to bring lunch um, until everything gets sorted out. That makes sense. Um, you know, and I, you know, that's, I mean, it's, every school's, it's not just us, every school's dealing with this and um, it will get sorted out. It will get better. I, I, my hope is that by next week, it's a lot better. Um, tutoring. Yes, there's going to be tutoring. Um, it's online tutoring. It's a different company that was used last year. If you guys are returning parents, you might remember that we had tutor.com last year. This is a different company. I'm hoping that they are going to, the district will be sending out how to log on and get access to that uh, next, hopefully by next week. Um, again, I'm sorry. There's a lot of things that I wish the district had had up and running for um, the start of school year and they don't. Um, but as soon as we get that information, um, you know, they will do that. Um, we'll get that out to you. And it's online tutoring for the entire year. And the online tutoring is 24 hours, seven days a week. So if your kid, hopefully your kid's not up at three in the morning, like working on their math homework, but sometimes they are, and they, there's going to be tutoring available for them because it is 24 seven. Um, and it's not just, it's what basically how it works is they get on and they chat with a tutor that are college age tutors and like that specialize in a subject area. And so basically what they go on is they log on and they say, I have a question about biology. And so then they're linked with a tutor that's got area of expertise in biology. Um, and then the tutor just doesn't give them the answer. It kind of helps them through it um, to figure out so that the kid can figure out what the answer is themselves and actually learn it. And it's online tutoring with a real person. They aren't like Zooming like we are. It's like a chat box type thing um, where, and they can actually like through the system, they can upload, like if they're working on a worksheet or something like that. Um, so they can upload it and like have like they share a screen where they can like draw out the problem and that sort of thing. Um, so homework and the assignments, most of our teachers use Google Classroom. And so communicating with the teacher to get access to the Google Classroom is the best way to keep track of homework and assignments. Um, because I would say 95% of our teachers use Google Classroom, um, and that is by far the easiest way to do it because you will see what's in there and you will be able to see if something has been turned in or not. Um, yeah. 
yeah, I'll remind the teachers to have the kids sanitize their hands when they um, enter the classrooms. Like there's a sanit hand sanitizer right next to the door in every classroom. So that's um, not a big deal. Um, online tutoring, it's not up and running yet. I will let you know as soon as it is, hopefully very soon. And um, everybody will have access to it. It won't be something that you have to sign up for. You will automatically have access to it or your child will. Okay. So hopefully that relieves some of your stress. Yes, I think it did. I mean, those are all very valid questions as a parent myself. Like that was really helpful, Jenny. Thank you. Um, we tend to talk about all the bad parts of stress. There are actually good things with stress too, but just the, f the first thing I wanted to share with you is just like, what is stress? What does that mean? And this stress is basically the changes our mind and body experience in response to the changing environment. So something changes in the environment, like this transition back to school and our body and our mind responds to that. And so it's something that is helpful for us, right? It's our way of responding to any sort of demand or threat and it can be helpful it can be harmful, but it really is dependent on how we, we respond to it. So how are we dealing with all these stresses of coming back to school? How are we, you know, taking care of ourselves? Um, so you can see on both sides of this, there's positive and negative. When it, a, I would, a good example of like a positive stress, I always say like a deadline. Like if, if Ginny gave me a deadline, didn't give me a deadline, I might really procrastinate I'd get it to her when I gave it you know and if I have a deadline it's like I know I have to get this done and it actually motivates me to do that um another example of good stress is if you see something in the environment you know like there's somebody that looks like a little suspicious or an animal that's following you it it protects you from danger you feel a little bit of stress and it protects you um, and so that's, those are examples of good stress, right? It, it enhances our focus. We're more alert. Um, but then on the flip side, there is, you know, the negative side, it makes us not motivated. You know, a lot of times I'll tell students or they'll tell me I'm already stressed and putting a lot of pressure on myself. And now my mom's stressed too, and putting more pressure. And so that excessive stress is demotivating. It makes them shut down. We saw that a lot last year during the shutdown as students were so stressed that they just stopped performing. They stopped working. They stopped doing things. Um, I see, you know, increases in stomach aches and headaches and, you know, less focus and less energy. And so there has to be this balance between good stress and bad stress. So this is the best way to look at that. So you see this curve, we call it the stress curve. And there's actually an optimum stress level. So let's say I have a bunch of things going on at work and, you know, but I'm still in a good space. Um, I'm stressed enough that it makes me productive. I'm in the optimum stress level. And that's right there in the yellow. If you see that yellow area, that's where we want to be. That's where we want our children to be, right? If we're in the green, maybe we don't have deadlines. We don't have enough going on there. We're really laid back. We can kind of get complacent. We don't want to be there either. We want to be in that yellow area. I would say for the majority of our students, they tend to function in the orange during the school year. You know, as a parent, I tend to function in the orange pretty much every day. And what happens with that is like you're overloaded with stress. We're dealing with work. We're dealing with our kids. We're dealing with family dynamics. We're dealing with our health concerns. And when we go into that orange area, we're just becoming overloaded and we start to get tired. We start to get exhausted. And if we don't kind of pause where we are and start to really take care of ourselves, it's very easy to get into that red area. If you see where it says anxiety, panic, anger, breakdown, I tend to see a lot of kids in the red during the end of the semester. Grades are coming out. Um, and same with parents. I see a lot of people in the red during that time of year too. But I think this is just a good way to, again, you know, we gave two tools in the beginning of how to manage and monitor yourself you know, those five questions, the list of 21 things to kind of mark how you're feeling. But this is just one more way to get an idea of where you are. Like, where are you this week? Are you, you know, yellow? I think I was probably orange the first part of the week, a little poking into red. And I think today I feel like I'm in the, in the yellow, you know, what about you, Ginny? Where are you? Um, I think I'm right in the middle. <laughs> I think right go either way. <laughs> yeah 
And it's just something to keep in mind because we can so easily transition into the next, the next column, right? The next color. And so just being mindful of like where we are and how to stay there. You know, if I'm moving over to orange, I definitely want to take a few things off my plate, get some extra sleep, make sure I'm checking off, you know, those basic daily healthy things that I need to do. So this is just another way for us to manage ourselves and to model that again, you know, make sure that our kids are like, hey, where are you guys today? You can show them this and just say like, where have you been this first week of school? You know, and then you get a good idea. Sometimes we ask open-ended questions to our, our teenagers and they're just not really into that. How was school? Fine, right? But this is something we're like, whoa, this is what the stress curve means. Where are you on this? It's a little more specific. It's a little less open-ended and it, you can definitely get a lot more information. Um, I'm, I'm happy if I can get a fine out of my kid about how is school. Usually I'll get a grunt like, mm. Mm. Um, let me interject and um, relieve some more parent stress by answering okay. some more questions. <laughs> Um, no so there's a question about if someone is tested positive, what's the protocol for staff and students now? Will the entire class have to stay home for 10 days? Um, it's not a simple answer. Um, it depends a lot on, you know, has the person actually been at school? Because sometimes they haven't been, um, especially since we've been at the beginning of, you know, it's the beginning of the year. Um, so there's that. Um, there depends on, you know, if you've been exposed, um, have, have you been vaccinated or not? Um, I sent out, um, you know, and well, so have you been vaccinated or not? And are you showing symptoms or not? And there's actually different answers to what to do um, if, you know, depending on, you know, your answer to that question. And so that gives us different direction on what should be done. Um, last week, I sent out a flow chart. There's actually a more updated flow chart that I will send out today. So realize um, the flow charts and the response to COVID, um, the school district, and again, this is not set by me, and this is set by the school district. Um, so but the school district has, there's a meeting at the county level with all of the different schools every week. That meeting happens Thursday afternoons. And so if there's any updated information, then they send it out. And so you might get like more updated information and it might be like, it seems like on a weekly basis, things are changing. And that's just the reality of our lives right now that things are changing, but I will always send you the most updated information. Um, so if we have um, a positive test result, um, generally how they, you know, do it is they look at like who were the close contacts, like if you were like sitting right next to a student that um, tested positive opposed to you were all the way across the classroom and had no contact with the student at all. Um, and so, yes, like, people would be notified, but it'd be a different kind of notification for a close contact versus just a general exposure. Um, and so there, it's not a gen, it's not a rule that the entire class would have to stay home for ten days. Again, how close was the contact? Um, you know, is there has the um, student been vaccinated? Are they showing symptoms? There's different answers, and so I will send you guys a flow chart. I'm sorry I don't have like a simple answer to that question, but there's just not a simple answer to that question. Um, there was another question about signing up for swimming and badminton. Swimming and badminton are both spring sports, um, which means if your child is wanting to do both swimming and badminton, they're not going to be able to. Um, so I don't know if you have two children that are, you know, looking for each of those sports, but they're, um, those are both spring sports and a child can't do, or a student cannot, um, do two sports in one season. So they're going to have to pick, um, spring sports, um, there's no enrollment process. They try out and then they see if they make the team or not. Um, and the tryouts for spring sports would probably be, Yvonne, do you remember you, your child did spring sports? I want to say it's like early. Late. It was like February. Yeah, I want to say it's usually February. Yeah. Like this actual season starts in March. So I think they have the tryouts in February. But all of that stuff, if you guys look on the school's website under the athletics tab, like they, there's dates and stuff. And that's where the, we would post all of that. Go on, Yvonne, sorry. Oh, sorry, okay. So I'm kind of gonna just, because we only have a couple of minutes here. And one of the things, you know, acute stress, chronic stress, chronic stress is long-term stress, basically. Acute stress is like, I had a little quick burst of stress at work. 
our bodies are designed for that. Our bodies are designed for, you know, back in the hunt and gathering days, a lion comes, you're scared, your heart races, you have this reaction to stress. And then you come back down and you go about your life when that threat is gone. But what we see now is chronic stress. You're stressed four years of high school. You're stressed every single day. Chronic stress is the worry, right? And then we add to that like the pandemic. So on top of just regular chronic stress, now we have like extra chronic stress. So this is something that this is one of the, I mean, as far as I know, like very rare in history is the whole entire world under chronic stress. And so we don't necessarily know, you know, the, the ramifications of that yet. And so, you know, I just wanted to acknowledge like returning after COVID, we don't know all the effects of this. We're learning them very quickly. And this one's kind of more focused on the teens, which we will be focusing on more next week. But remember that anxiety thrives in the unknown. And how much unknown have we experienced in the last year and a half? We didn't know if there was going to be toilet paper. We didn't know, you know, who was going to be president. We didn't know all these things. And that is the perfect breeding ground for anxiety. And so just acknowledging that there's different things that we're having to respond to as far as anxiety this year that we've never had to before. The unknown. Transition is hard in general. Transition after not being in school over 500 days is huge. Now we're dealing with, you know, health anxiety. Am I sick? Is my parents sick? Overstimulation. You know, I always use the example of, you know, going to Target after things started to let up a little bit and seeing people with no mask. It's crowded. I'm not used to that. The lights are bright in there. It's just a lot. I've heard students, I've had students already come in saying like, everything feels extra loud. The, the hallways feel extra crowded. So I don't know if you've experienced this, but just that overstimulation, not used to being out. We're so used to just those quiet moments in our house. Maybe not all of our houses are quiet, but generally speaking, like quiet. And now we're dealing with this. And so there's that, there's the word about did my kid lose learning are they going to be ready for this year you know how are their friendships we know that kids are not sleeping I don't know if you had any you know vampires in your house but I have had children who were sleeping until two in the afternoon you know these are all stressors and changes that have been happening um, I have kids who put on weight I did <laughs> and then coming back and having to come face to face with their friends and so just all these different things and you guys are going to laugh at my next slide because how to support. We were working on that this morning and we had kids come in, not okay, stressed, overwhelmed. So we were taking care of that. And that's kind of how this slide ended up blank. So I decided to share it with you because that's kind of the nature of the last week and a half is just like, um, you know, I think I said in the beginning, we have two social workers now. Kayla, are you here? She's here, I think. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh, I good. kind of stuck good. in like you 20 minutes ago. Yourself. And you know what? Everyone, just so you know, we do one-on-one -on -one counseling, we do check-ins, we do consults. We're going to talk about our teenagers next week. And so, you know, the best way to get in contact with us is on the website, our email, um, if your students need anything. But Kayla, if you want to just take a sec. Yeah, again, sorry for being late, but that is the nature of this position. When the student's having a hard time, we take that time with them. And luckily, we have multiple social workers where the um the presentation can continue um I think I came in on the stress slope so I was you know seeing where I was where I, I was probably in that orange worrying like oh no now I'm missing probably the first parent presentation that I could be a part of you know in this new role that I'm in but knowing that Yvonne and Ginny are taking it and it goes on off without a hitch um was really helpful then I got back to my yellow green hopefully um so yeah, I just wanted to introduce myself and there are so many different ways we can support, you know, your students here and we're happy to help. Yep. And I am A through L and Kayla has the end of the alphabet if you're reaching out to us, just so you know. So I want to take a moment um, as we end um, and acknowledge Amy's question in the chat, even though we're not going to answer it. Um, and so, because it's actually a great segue to next week. Um, I'm worried that my kid chooses to spend a lot of time hanging out with friends, watching Instagram on the phone, staying up late until 4 a.m. to finish homework, anything I can do. Well, Amy, tune in next week. <laughs> um, next week, we're going to talk about your teenagers and the way that they're exhibiting their own stress and anxiety, because it may not be the same way that we do as parents. They've got their own, um, you know, 
avoidance type things that they do to cope. Um, and it may not always be the healthiest choices because I think we would all agree that staying up to 4 a.m. is not the healthiest choice because they have to get up early. Um, so Amy, if you can hold on to that for a week um, and we will definitely get to that. Um, there was one last question about SATs. Um, I do not have an answer yet on whether or not we are gonna be doing the SAT school day where we're offering it at school. Um, SAT and ACT are being offered. So um, you know, if you wanted to sign your kid up for the SAT and ACT, you absolutely can. I do not know if we're gonna be offering it at school yet. Um, I, I, we don't, I don't have that information. Okay. Um, so I know you guys have a lot of questions and you, I, I know it's a lot, the re, like reopening of school and coming back to school. And a lot of you are new parents, um, you know, um, so um, I, I know that it's a lot. Um, and so I thank you guys for coming in and like being willing to talk about stress and listen to our advice about stress. Um, and um, thank you. And um, I will see you next week. Um, so if you guys, again, if you're having questions about um, the, you know, emails, you know, and parent portal and like communication and you're not getting it, Rupert Rosales is your guy, okay? Um, and then this one last question about devices in school. Yes, devices are allowed in school. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome.